Okay, before we start actually making shoes, I'm going to briefly walk you through all the different tools and the materials that we will be using um, while making shoes. And these are probably all of the things that you need to get to. So let's start with the easy things. You're going to need a pencil and some sort of a marker. You're going to need some sort of ruler, and I like to use these ones because it's easy to mark seam allowance. Um, for sewing, this is also very useful. You're going to need some sort of a brush to apply your glue, but you can also just use like a skewer or a twig, or it doesn't really matter that much. You're going to need masking tape, uh, more of it than this too. Uh, we'll use it in the very first start. You're going to need um, these sort of cotton removal pads, right? Um, to dye our shoes. These are all the things that are sort of like a school-like thing. Speaking of school, you're going to need a couple of heavy books just to, when we glue the, the heels, we're going to put some heavy books in them. You're going to need some scissors. Then, this is what I will call the sort of hardware department, maybe something that you can find in your garage or your toolbox. You will need a screwdriver. You'll see that I will use like a drill or an electric screwdriver. That's fine too. You'll need that screwdriver because we're going to be needing screws. Um, these are fairly short but sturdy screws to attach our heels. You will need nails, <clears throat> not too big, not too small, to do our lasting. Given that we need nails, we're obviously going to need a hammer. You're going to use um, this sort of uh, metal thread. This is the kind of thread that's used by people who do flower arranging. Um, so you can, you can get it there or at the hardware store. And you're going to need some pliers to cut this thread. Um, you're going to need a box cutter. Pretty heavy one too, or even better, is something like this. Because we need to cut leather with it. So. Um, I mean, this gets pretty hefty. Oh, this is also from the school department. You're going to need some pattern paper, or you can just use any old paper to mark the different pattern parts for our shoes. Um, you're going to need some latex, or these are actually vinyl gloves for when you dye your shoes, because that thing really stains. Um, you don't need this, but you'll see that I use a branding iron, and if you want that, then you need one of these mini flamethrowers. <clears throat> um, you're going to need a zip or the eyelets, uh, basically the notions to complete your shoe, but this will depend a bit on the choices you make regarding to style. You're going to need needles to do your hand sewing. You're going to need thread. Um, this is regular strong government thread. And then this is um, like a thicker and waxed thread. And with this waxed thread, we sort of come in the area of things that are a little bit harder to get and for which you will have to uh, try to find a specialized supplier. So this thread is, um, is waxed in beeswax, right? It's, um, it's a black thread and it's strong and it's made for shoe lasting, uh, for shoe making. So it's the fact that it's waxed helps to keep the shoes uh, waterproof. Um, since we're in that department, this is the polish that I use. Um, it's not that important, any old shoe polish will do. This is the dye that I use. Um, this is black dye, I'm sure that there's other brands too, but this is the one that I've used. Then, this is the glue, right? This is in Dutch, but it basically says very sticky leather glue. So that's not very helpful. It's a, sort of like a transparent glue, as you will see in the videos. And this is a different type of view, which is even less recognizable. It's a, like a white glue, uh, looks a bit like the glue that you know you used to put the wallpaper up. This is used for the, for the toe cap and the heel cap. Um, if you don't have this, if you can find the regular leather glue, that will be fine. Uh, oh, I almost forgot, this is Taylor chalk that I also use at one part to mark things. This little thing um, is an owl, so it's basically like a handle and then sharp pin on the edge, on the end of it, and you typically buy more of those pins. Um, this is made to puncture the leather to make holes that we're going to be uh, using to sew. Um, so this is like a leather hand tool, um, the first of a few. The second is this little thing that is used to make grooves in the leather, like that, which we'll make in the sole to lay our stitches in. I don't know what it's called, a groover, I guess, I have no idea. What I do know is that this thing is called a skiving knife. So it's a sort of like a bent knife um, uh, that is used to make like a tapered edge at the leather, but you get, I, can't, I guess you can get away with using a box cutter for that. 
What you're absolutely going to need is a pair of these cobbler pliers um, to do the lasting. So much for our um, leather hand tools. Um, then we're basically based, left with two things and two very important things. The first is the shoe last. You're going to need these. There's no way to make shoes without them. Um, it, it's going to be tricky to get them because making shoes is, is not really a hobby that is that is well well established. Um, making clothes very much more. You can go to your local haberdasher and they will have all the things there to make clothes, but there's no such thing for shoemaking. So I will put up the link of the company where I bought these lasts from. Um, keep in mind, I wear a shoe size 52, which is ridiculously large. And if I can find shoe last, then you can find shoe last. These are collapsible. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier to get them out of the, to get your shoe out of the last. And I'm looking for pliers to, I'll use this, you see like that. So the last collapse like that, and that makes it easier to take it in and out. You're absolutely going to need these. And then we're left with like the material itself. This is a sheet of rubber. It's about four millimeters thick that I used for the sole, right? I bought this from a, a cobbler. Um, they, they buy this to when people want a new rubber. So you just go there and, and ask to buy a sheet of this. They are typically uh, willing to do that. And then it's down to the leather. We're going to be using uh, different types of leather for the different parts of the shoe. And I'm starting with the very thickest leather. Um, see, this is can barely fold. This is a quite a thick uh, leather. And this is the leather that we will be using for the outer sole. This is this leather that you see. Um, it's this leather, which is like a like a hide, and just like all the other leather, you, you're going to have to find a place that sells leather hides. Next up is this leather, which is a bit harder, a bit easier to fold, but still quite stiff, as you can see. This is the leather that we will be using for the sort of midsole, uh, which you can't really see that well, but it sits here. And we'll also be going to use it to um, make the, the, toe, the toe cap and the heel cap stronger, right? It's like a stiff leather, but not as stick as our sole leather. This leather is very thin. It's the thinnest letter that we will use, and this is our lining, right? So as you can see, it is black. See the lining of our shoe here is black. This is this letter. Um, and if you go to a leather store uh, or like a dealer, if you ask for lining, then they should give you something like this. They, of course, might have it in different colors. Sometimes it's perforated, uh, which helps with breeding. But uh, that's your choice. It's the lining letter. And then we're down to the letter of our uppers and the uppers is the upper part of our shoe the part that you see so this part of the shoe and as you can see or i hope you can see we have two different types here and i've done that because i wanted to show you the two different ways that you can make leather uh, that you can make your shoes one is by buying something like this right this is thicker than our lining but not as thick as our toe cap leather it's like a like a good sort of like a hefty like if you would make a bag out of this it would be like a strong bag um, it's a vegetable tanned leather which is not only better for the environment than the alternative which is chromium tanned um, it also makes it a little bit easier to work with and as you can say it is made almost pristine white um, and the, the benefit of this is that when we buy this leather we can dye it ourselves in any color that we like right which gives you some flexibility because often when you buy a uh, height, you have to buy an entire height or sometimes half a height. You can't just say, oh, give me a piece like that because I want to make shoes, right? So you're going to have to buy uh, maybe more leather than you need for one pair of shoes. And then you can just buy different uh, types of dye. You can buy like a pale brown, a darker brown, black, and then you can basically make different shoes or, or other things with this one leather. You can turn it into whatever you want. Um, so I'll be using that for the large, for the tip, but for the rest of the shoe, um, I will be using this purple leather, which is basically the same when it comes to sort of thickness as the other, but the difference is here, of course, it's been tanned to a certain look, a certain color, and that's what it is, right? So you can make, well, I guess you can use the suede side and the, the other side, but apart from that, it is what it is. Um, and, and if you like it, you can buy it like that, but then whatever you make is going to be looking like this. So you have a little bit of less flexibility, but then on the other hand, if you want to make alligator shoes, then you're going to have to buy alligator skin. You can't buy that, right? So these are basically um, the types of leather that you need, all of the tools that you need to make a complete pair of shoes. And that's what we're going to do now.
So let's get started.